All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. I have a very interesting video for you guys today on rooting fig cuttings. I really hope that you guys will stick around to the end for this one. There's so much information I have to share on this particular method of rooting. It's called pre-rooting. And what I have actually right here in front of me are cuttings that I've had inside in darkness, but I've given them the right temperature of 75 degrees to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I've also wrapped the bottom of the cutting with a paper towel and then I sprayed with a spray bottle actually the paper towel and got the bottoms of the cuttings and even just inside this bag gave the bag and the cutting some moisture and what has kind of formed in that process are root initials. This is the beginning stage of the rooting process and that we need to see and you can see it's really interesting actually I'll take one of these out of here. Here's, it's really cool. You can see actually all the new growth. And then here's the bottom part where I wrapped it with a paper towel. And this bottom portion, actually, I've kept this somewhat moist. Um, I've kept it in a bag. Then I put the bag in this bin and then put the lid over top of the bin just to try to trap a lot of that moisture in. What I did was wrap the paper towel actually around the cutting. And you can see here, I actually taped, I did tape the cutting around, um, or I taped the paper towel, excuse me, around the cutting. And this is kind of what you get just by having this excess moisture, even the moisture, by the way, in the bag, it doesn't even look like with this particular cutting that for whatever reason, this guy actually formed root initials up higher on the cutting, which is interesting. But you can see, look at all these little white areas here. This is the beginning root formation. And typically this forms on the lenticels, I think they're called, which can form on these little spots that you'll see actually anywhere on the cutting, not just around the, the nodes themselves, but typically some hot spots are around the nodes. You can see them. You, you can definitely see lenticels on your trees right now. If you looked at your trees, uh, you can see them forming as the wood hardens. Um, and you can even start to see that actually there on the bottom, which is rather interesting. The root initials are forming now that this is sort of calloused up down here. This is the rooting process. And a lot of people I don't think know about this method or even just um, apply this to figs. This is not really a fig specific method. And I don't think people really know, they have not taken the time to really study the rooting process to know that this is just what has to happen. This is kind of what's happening underneath the soil, that if I were to take this pot, which is filled with soil, and put this in here without pre-rooting it, this is just what happens under the hood, right? You can't see this process uh, because it's covered in soil, but this is just basically, what happens? We need this callousing process. Sometimes we get good moisture here and we actually have uh, these lenticels. They then have that root formation there. Um, and you know what? I think it's just a really good and valuable learning experience to observe this. Uh, I have never actually done this method. I want to just preface, the, you know, and before I go any further with that statement, because this actually was a method that has been around for a very long time. I don't exactly know um, who in, indeed invented this method because I don't think it's really a fig specific method. This is just a general rule of rooting cuttings. You can do this with a pa wet paper towel with so many different species of plants. Some, some just take a bit longer than others and obviously the fig is one of the easiest fruit trees to root. Uh, but certainly you could do this with so many other things, and I'm sure it's been done so many other times with so many other species of plants. But I first heard about this when I first started growing figs about eight years ago when I joined Figs for Fun, which was an online community of people who were really obsessed with growing figs, and they really were in it. Most of them were in it for the hobby, and there's actually not that many of those people still around different communities for various reasons. But... Um, those people it, on that forum, the, the owner, John Verdict, uh, had this section of 
the site where you could actually go there and look at this rooting process that he describes actually this pre-rooting process where people had either taken the cuttings exactly how I mentioned, we wrapped them with a wet paper towel, or even some people put them in um, moistened uh, sphagnum peat moss. Or even, even moistened core, you can do this, or even uh, peat moss, just in general. And people have done this now in, in bins. They actually fill up the entire bin here um, with some sort of material, moisten it to their liking, and then they stick the cuttings in there. And as they start to root in this environment, they take them up out of there. And now that they're up out of this environment, I can then go ahead and stick this directly into soil, which in my opinion is a really nice and beneficial way of rooting cuttings, uh, particularly figs, because I really um, have to say that these thicker cuttings, especially that's what's in here really, is I've saved a lot of my thicker cuttings for this method. Here's actually another one right here, a Brianzolo Rosso cutting that you can see, even just putting them in a moistened bag without even using the paper towel has set up a lot of these root initials. But for me, I think, you know, the main benefit of doing this is for these thicker cuttings. Here's actually a, uh, another one here. This one's called Nero Rocco, and it has actually a root that has formed. So, I would rather with these thicker cuttings, oh my God, here's actually some down here that have really have some roots to them. This is a uh, barb and loan. Again, these are some of my own cuttings that we took six months ago. Here's actually roots down here at the bottom. I've yet to unwrap all of these, but I would prefer this method personally with these thicker ones, because if I were to just stick the cutting into soil, um, you can kind of get an issue with either having rot, uh, maybe if it was a thinner cutting. Um, you know, typically the thinner they are, the easier they can be to rot. The thicker they are, the more moisture they need and the more contact, the constant uh, humidity that they need to actually root. And sometimes these thicker ones here, because of that reason, they can take a lot longer to root. So for me, I actually prefer, even for thinner ones maybe, is actually pre-rooting them, getting the initials to form, or even getting some roots to form, and then sticking this then into this direct pot here, or the direct potting method, which is what I've talked about and have done for many years. Uh, I will do one more, because I actually forgot a couple things. I am gonna add this mycorrhizae. This is from Clonex. I'm sure you guys can use any mycorrhizae that you want. Let's do this other long to do cutting. I do want to also mention it's, it is very, very interesting to me, of course, that these cuttings, they always have um, lasted quite longer than people might expect in, in the fridge. I had these cuttings, like I said, I took them in November. It's now the middle of May. It's been six months. And this process, by the way, I only really have been pre-rooting them for less than two weeks about, about two weeks maybe. Um, so with the right environment, the right temperature, the right humidity, we start to see this happen. Now, actually a good point to make is that instead of those two weeks in this environment, in these bags that I have, I could have them two weeks in this potted soil here, which is a lot of moisture, which may be too much moisture, which may be also some organic material in here that may be trying to actually degrade the cutting and break it down into compost, you know, the, cu the cutting has to fight those microbes to end up living and sending up this living material here in the form of roots. Um, so for me anyway, this just makes a ton of sense. Uh, let me also, before I get too, you know, sidetracked here, what I'm gonna do is actually take some of this mycorrhizae I'm going to dab it there on the, on the roots, the root initials that we see in various places. Don't need to go crazy with this. We just need to make some contact with, this, with the, uh, the roots. And then I'm going to stick that in there. And I'm going to go down as far as I can to get as many root initials underneath the soil. Then actually what I'm going to do, just to finish this process off for you guys, 
is I'm gonna take a little bit of this slow release fertilizer that I have. These are just the beads. I know you guys know what this is, it's Osmocote. This one here is Florican. There's so many brand names. And then I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top. And I like to do, I mean, just, just enough to cover a little bit of the top layer there with a good amount of those, um, those beads or whatever you wanna call them. So that's the finished process here. This is going to continue now that it is warm outside, right? It's the middle of May, the forecast has been great. The nighttime temperatures have been over 60. Also, the sun is gonna come out, naturally give these plants the photosynthesis that they need. Also, it's gonna warm up the sides of the pot. So the, the root zone temperatures during the day should warm up. And roughly on an average, we should be seeing about a 70 to 75 degree average root zone temperature, which is, which is exactly what we want for the rooting process. Uh, this is exactly what we want um, you know, to get these plants off on the right foot because if it was too hot, let's say I waited to do this, well, the root zone temperatures might be too warm. And if it was in the middle of August and I'm trying to do this, this is gonna be a lot more difficult to achieve. So um, we wanna have just the right cooler environment right now for these very fragile young cuttings that really haven't done their thing just yet to get them established in these pots. And by about two months from now, I, maybe even less for some of them, like this LDA or the barb alone here, some of them, depending on how far progressed they are, they're very vigorous varieties, and I know how thick these, these cuttings are, how much energy these cuttings had. Just for my in-ground trees, these are gonna take off in no time. I imagine probably in about a month and a half, some of these will be really strongly rooted trees, and I'll be able to sell them or give them away, trade them, whatever it is that I want. This, I think, to me, just eliminates this whole process, eliminates any of the guesswork. We have a higher success rate um, we also get the, the moisture contact that we want. And we also can just stick every single cut. I put every single cutting I had that was of a certain thickness in this bin. And this is all I had in just a, a closet with a light on. And that, that light gave the, the temperatures that I needed. I didn't need a heat mat. I just ran a light bulb uh, for two weeks. So for me, it's affordable, it's easy, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Anyone can do this anywhere in their house. You do this at the right time. So for me, I started this on my last frost date. So my last frost date was May 1st. It's now May 15th. They're coming out of the house. I'm, they're pre-rooted or most of them are pre-rooted. And now they're going directly into these pots. Once they go directly into these pots, I give them the mycorrhizae, I give them the fertilizer. And then I put them um, somewhere in an environment that isn't too sunny. So that's critical as well. They are still rather fragile, so we've got to keep them in somewhat of a shady location. Um, and they just as long as they get the temperatures that they want, some of that natural sunlight, these guys are going to grow just fine over the next uh, month and a half to three months before they're a full-fledged uh, tree and something fully rooted out in this pot. So for me, this has just been um, great. I Again, I really like this method. I probably will, I will definitely continue doing this next year. And this uh, is also, I want to mention, better than, uh, better than um, the fig pot method. Because I think uh, you can get the moisture that you want easier with this method. That's the beauty of the fig pot method for anyone that does that. And you could even do this, by the way, with the fig pot method, but I wouldn't. I really would just, at this point, once we've got the cutting to the state that I showed you, just stick it in the soil in the pot size that you're gonna keep it in for a long time. Because the fig pot method, we put it in the fig pot, in the bag of soil. Then once the bag of soil, it reaches the final stage in which it can't be in that bag anymore, we then have to take it out of there and up pot it. And in that up potting process, we actually damage some of the roots and we have transplant shock. So for me, this just makes a ton of sense. This beats out the fig pot method. Um, it beats out the direct potting method. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't really know how else to explain it to you guys. This is as easy as it gets. I did nothing. And almost all of them have rooted really well. So 
Thank you guys. We'll talk to you soon. Hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you for the next one.